car. Good evening, you might remember me from yesterday, Constable Shaw from Island Police, so yeah. I gave you my car. How did you know I was here? Just so you're aware, I'm recording um, our conversation so interaction with my body one. Yep, that's fine. With me is Acting Inspector Vanderwolf. Yeah, can I ask so, how you knew I was here? One moment, ma'am. I'm going to ask you some questions in relation to an alleged breach of a public health order that occurred at Bado Bay Square yesterday around midday. Yeah. Yep, do you understand? Yeah. Yep, you do not have to say or do anything if you do not want to. Yeah. But anything you do say or do will be recorded and that record may be used in the court. Do you understand? Yeah. Okay. Last week we brought to you the breaking story of a single mother in New South Wales who had been unlawfully arrested by police for not wearing a mask. And if, and if you're, you're going to cause a scene, don't resist, man. Give me I'm my allowed. purse! Do man. not touch my purse! Man. As I said, you're Do under not arrest. touch my purse! The video ended with the officer rightfully apologising to the woman. I I'm correct. Apologize. You're more than welcome and encouraged to go and make a complaint. I should have known better. That's on me. After seeing that apology, I gave the officer credit. I thought it was due, but today I take it all back because that same cop who apologised for falsely arresting and assaulting the young mother for not wearing a mask just tracked her down to confront her again. Watch what happened. Do you agree that yesterday we had a conversation at the shopping centre about you not wearing a mask? Well, it wasn't exactly a conversation. He means this conversation. Get don't resist, man. Give me I'm my allowed. purse! Do man. not touch my purse! Man. As I said, you're Do not touch my purse! When we had our interaction, which was recorded by both of us, and at the end, when I called my sergeant and I received some information, and I said that you were correct. You were correct in regards to you do not need to provide proof or a reason of an exemption. However, in not doing that, we the onus is on us to prove that you're not in... You're not committing offence under public health order by refusing to do it and not just providing an excuse that can't be backed up. So I'll be correcting the onus is on you. Not sorry? Us. The onus is on you, no, sorry. Sorry. Wow. Talk about backtracking and if you're confused as to why he suddenly changed his approach, watch until the end. It'll become very clear. And just in case you really believe that this is about not wearing a mask. Notice how both the officers here who have come to fine her for that alleged offence of no mask are both not wearing bloody masks. In relation to public health orders under section 112, regardless of whether you've provided an exemption or not, police have the right to request your name and address if we believe that you're in breach of a public health order. Um, let me get this straight. The public health directions state you have to wear a mask unless you have an exemption. And the public health directions also clearly state that you don't have to show that exemption. You just have to say that you have it. She did that. No one denies that she did. But police are now fining her for not showing the exemption that she didn't have to show. They think we're stupid. They've just tracked her down, not even at her house, by the way, at her ex-partner's home, to harass and intimidate the single mother after the footage of her unlawful arrest went viral. This is not about mask compliance. They obviously don't care about that. Heck, you saw, he didn't even wear a mask when he initially went to apologise, let alone now to fine her. Understand what's really happening here. They are now trying to justify unlawfully arresting and assaulting her in front of her children. You see, apologizing was an admission of guilt, meaning he was admitting to having no reason to place her under arrest and searching her, which technically means he had assaulted her. Now they're just back to cover his ass, finding her they think suddenly justifies his assault. It doesn't. And with your help at fightthefines.com.au, we're first going to crowdfund her defence. And if we have to, we're going to take it even further. Okay. In relation to public health orders under section 112, regardless of whether you've provided an exemption or not, police have the right to request your name and address if we believe that you're in breach of a public health order. Problem is, old mate, how could you really believe she was in breach of the public health order? when she clearly wasn't. The entire world witnessed her telling you that she had an exemption. That is literally 
all she legally has to do to comply with the orders. People My lawyer's going to chew this Central up, Coast, you know. They're going to have a field Central day with Coast you. Area must wear a mask when in a public health when in a public area, including a shopping centre. And yes, there are exemptions. I still can't get over the fact that they're there to fine her for not wearing a mask while not wearing masks. But she's right. Her lawyer will have a field day with it. And we're going to make sure of that because we are crowdfunding her defense at fightthefines.com.au. So if you want to help us help her, please give what you can. And guess what? A gun lawyer who has previously won a COVID matter for us in Sydney is already on the case. In fact, he's with her right now in his office. Manny, thank you for joining us and thank you for taking on DJ's case. What can you tell us? Well, at the time of uh, her detention by police, she uh, had a medical excuse, a medical exemption, which is which amounts to a reasonable excuse. She conveyed that to police in a very cooperative manner. Nonetheless, they detained her. Uh, subsequently, they apologized to her for that and released her. However, the very next day, they turned up at a house and served her with a fine uh, for the very same thing. I did note that at the time of her arrest and also at the time when they served the fine, they did not or were not wearing protective gear, masks, gloves, etc. And, uh, you know, it's one of those situations where she was very cooperative. She'd given them what her excuse actually is, and there was absolutely no reason whatsoever for her to be detained or fined. So at this stage, we have a very strong defense and uh, we uh, are uh, aiming to uh, file for a review of the fine and uh, will hopefully uh, common sense will prevail and the uh, fine will be withdrawn. Absolutely. Hopefully common sense does prevail. Otherwise, we'll take this all the way to the top. Absolutely. Because until now, I must say, not much common sense has been applied. I'm going to give you an explanation of something, okay? You need to take this on board. Where's police? You need to take this on board that your, police, that your constable police, here reached into my bag and intimidated me. To ensure that instead of taking action in their matters, we educate. That's a good one. They just tracked DJ down to educate her. I think we should probably just call it a course fee of $500. You just can't make this stuff up. It's unbelievable. We're in a position where we must take action a bit to what, what's happening. That's, we have to take action a bit yesterday. And what's, We're coming action? Today and what's the action, mate? Under Section 113 of the Public, the public Health Act. Am I under arrest right now? Uh, of course so not. I don't have to speak to you. Bye. You want to see some paperwork in the mail. But we're not going to let this happen to you, DJ. You're not going to be in this one alone. We are actually going to crowdfund your fight at fightthefines.com.au because... We've been down this road before, in fact, with Manny sitting there right next to you. I'm not sure if you know DJ, but we actually call Manny our gun Sydney lawyer because he's already won a case for us, and we've instructed him to go as far as he has to with your matter. How does that make you feel? Um, that really um, makes me feel at ease more. Um, Manny's been absolutely amazing um, talking to me about everything and supporting me um, and yourself. It's just given me a lot more confidence to, you know, fight these um, corrupt policemen. It's, it's disgusting how they treated me and the fact that they further came to intimidate me at my son's family house. Um, it, yeah, it just gives me a lot more confidence to be able to do something and, you know, um, make it right. And right we will make it, I promise. Not just for you, DJ, but for as many Aussies as possible. So for those of you watching this and that are as outraged as I am about what's happening, Please join us in the ongoing battle for civil liberties down under at fightthefines.com.au. Thank you. Thank you, Abby. Our Fight the Fines campaign has been incredible thanks to all of you. In fact, today, Victoria Police prosecutors, where most of our matters to date have been, are finally essentially conceding that COVID fines will not stand up in court. They now say that they are dropping a lot of the approximately 20,000 fines. If they don't drop yours, let us know and we will fight for you. But for now, we're shifting our focus to the rest of the country, like New South Wales for DJ, so their prosecutors follow suit. So please help us fight for as many Aussies as possible by giving what you can at fightthefines.com.au now.